So now we've come to the sterilization and autoclaving point of the video. Here we're just showing the large vessel and not the small one just for the sake of screen size so that you can see. It's important to keep in mind that um, this all must be done in a, in a sterile environment when you're assembling uh, once after autoclaving. So first we're going to demonstrate how to prepare the components for autoclaving, but once they are removed from the autoclave, you take them into a grade 8 space or your sterile biological cabinet or hood to assemble the parts. I recommend wearing sterile sleeves for this task or sterile gowning just to ensure that you don't get any contaminants in the system. First, we use the bottle right here that I'll have Dr. Steve uh, pick up. At the ends, all you really need to do is get some aluminum foil and cover the port just there. So during um, autoclaving, that is the part that's susceptible to contamination, so that is all that you need to cover. You could sterilize that whole assembly in one shot. Next, right in front of that, we have the vessel wall. That must be wrapped in foil or an autoclave bag and be sterilized separately. In front of that is the cradle used to prepare in the hood, also autoclaved separately in foil. Then we have right in front of it being the chamber where your vessels are tied on, also wrapped separately and autoclaved. In front is your spring-loaded filter, same story there, autoclaved separately, and the two end caps, which the same thing is done with those. On the far right, you see the donut. This is really for um, setting it up to create basic pressure once you're in the hood. You can put the end caps on much easier this way to get the right fit. Again, all of this is autoclaved separately and can be assembled together in the hood after sterilization. It's recommended that you do this at 121 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. Okay. Now we've come to the vessel assembly portion of our video. Consider that all of these items have already been autoclaved and that you have removed them from their autoclave bag or sterile foil before assembling and bringing um, or after bringing into the hood. So now we have uh, the com middle component basically where you're going to attach your tubular uh, scaffolding. It can be placed into the cradle for assembly or for attachment of your construct. So there is where you would attach your vessel or your construct and then perhaps using a sterile suture of some kind to attach to the, the prongs that you see there. After that, <clears throat> you would grab your filter, your spring-loaded filter, and take note of which side that you're placing it in to your end cap. It can go into, it has one end cap that it fits into. That is placed into the donut. Next, the vessel wall. You have to press down and make sure that it fits snugly. Then load in the inner assembly into the center and press just to make sure it's against the filter. And finally, the top. This requires definitely some pressure to make sure that it's snug on top as well. And do remember to mark which side the filter is on because that would be your exit flow or your efflux. So now that we have the vessel mostly assembled, you will need to remove the one-way valves or septums, whichever you choose to use, from their sterile packaging. Each of these will be attached to the ports one at a time before filling with media. Then, oh, on the sides, on the end caps, you will attach the other sterile one-way valves, keeping in mind which side is the inflow and the outflow. For the inflow, you will notice that this is a tube that is um, longer. It goes down into the bottle. 
and you will attach that to the inflow side. While before that though, you will remove, of course, if you still have your sterile wrapping. Do the same with the other side for the outflow. And now you're ready to fill with media and cells. Okay, we are still at operations within the hood and this is filling the extra luminal space or the vessel with media. First, you notice we have attached our septum and our one-way stopcock valve. We will use two syringes first, one that fits into the stopcock. That one is filled with media. Next, we use the syringe with the cannula through the septum. You can have two stopcock valves or two septums, it's really a matter of preference, but we're showing you uh, the diversity here. First, you'll start to inject media through the stopcock while simultaneously pulling the bubbles out of the septum. You'll see a bubble as if you uh, rotate to where the septum valve is directly up. So the bubbles, because of gravity, will start to rise. That way, as you shift it, you should be able to press in more media from the stopcock valve while removing the bubbles from the septum. It may require a bit more media, but eventually you will remove the headspace. Right. Okay, now we have our fully assembled, closed, and sterile system already with your constructs and all the media and the bubbles removed. At this point, you can remove it from the hood by using another stainless steel tray. Take the entire assembly, place into the tray, and you can carry it over to your rotator base, which is in your incubator. Okay, we now have our assembly that we have brought over to the rotator base. First, you can take the vessel and the media bottle. Place the media bottle in the reservoir, basically the space that holds the bottle in the back of the rotator base. Then, paying attention to the inflow and the outflow sides, begin, yes, turn the vessel in the correct orientation and place in its cradle. What's that called? The oxygenator. Oh, okay. The oxygenator is being placed with a small screw. Then you feed the tubing through the peristaltic pump and press down to secure it. Next, you can feed the portions of the tubing that attach to the inflow as well as the outflow. And now, apparatus is assembled. Also note that the tubing on the inflow and the outflow should be placed in the clips on either side so that the rotation does not cause excessive wear. Also check that on either side, with the stopcock for the inflow and outflow, that they are open so that the flow for the media can go through the lumen of the vessel or your construct. Ensure that the ribbon cable attached to the pump side gets attached at the pump position in the back of the rotator base. Next, attach the ribbon cable for the drive to the side of the rotator base. Keep in mind that the power supply for the rotator base is operated outside of the incubator with the ribbon cables allowing for them to be slid through the door 
in between the gasket and the glass piece of the door. So now the vessel has been operating and you've had your culture and you're ready after however long to change the media. First, you can use your tray, either remove the entire rotator base or merely the whole uh, flow loop off of the rotator base. This assembly will then be placed in your tray to be carried to your hood to swap out the media. It is important that the entire assembly is removed to maintain sterility. Now we are back in the biological safety cabinet. We have our replacement media bottle filled with new media as well as our old one with the rest of the apparatus. Now we will begin to disassemble and reconnect just right there at the top to the new media bottle. Remove the waste bottle, place the assembly back in your tray, and carry back for reassembly to your incubator.